Bonjour, and today we're covering the pronominal verbs in French because now and then I have a student that says that French grammar is very difficult, that you know it's too hard and everything, and to that I inevitably answer, well, the greater the difficulty, the more glory there is in surmounting it. So today we're shining a light on the pronominal verbs in French. Are you ready? Let's get down to it. This lesson is divided in two parts. We're going to define what they are, those verbs. Are they special? Why are they, they are special? Giving you an example. And finally, four categories of them, because we can classify them. It'll be clearer at some point of your understanding of the French grammar. Maybe it's already the case. Maybe you already need to divide them and split them in different groups. I don't know. But it will be needed at some point because there are different groups and if you don't know what's doing what in a sentence in French, you're basically doomed. So, as far as grammar <laughs> analytics go and expressing uh, your ideas clearly in French, yeah, you're definitely doomed if you cannot identify each word, what does each word of the sentence in a sentence. But let's start with the definition. Pronominal verbs are used when a subject is doing the action for himself and the reflexive pronouns me te se nous vous se are placed before the verbs. Let's take an example when we have the verb to wonder, which is se demander in French, not to mistake with demander. Se demander means to wonder, demander means to ask. But se demander in this case will be declined this way. Je me demande, I wonder. Tu te demandes, you wonder. Il, elle, on se demande. He, she, we wonder. Nous nous demandons, we wonder, vous vous demandez, you wonder, il, elle se demande, they wonder. This is basically all there is to it, as far as using and conjugating reflexive verbs or pronominal verbs to be more exact in this case. Not so hard. Me te se, nous vous se. Now watch out, because some verbs exist only in the pronominal form. Others change meaning in the pronominal forms. I already said that, I mentioned that like a minute ago, talking about the difference between se demander and demander. For example, we have here a verb that only works in the pronominal form, which is se méfier. To be suspicious of something. Je me méfie de ce détective. I'm suspicious of this detective. Tu te méfies de ce détective. Il se méfie de ce détective. Nous nous méfions de ce détective. Vous vous méfiez de ce détective. Il se méfie de ce détective. Only pronominal. You cannot méfier someone. You, you, you need to me méfier, te méfier, vous méfier. Now we have verbs that accept both forms and their meaning is going to change. At times, not always. Sometimes it will just mean that you have a verb that is reflected at someone and then the meaning doesn't change. But here we have an example where the meaning of the verb changes entirely. L'étranger demande le chemin. The stranger is asking for directions. But il se demande. He's wondering. He's, he's wondering where to find girls with hats. Il se demande où trouver des filles à chapeau. This is for the first part of the definition. It's not too hard up to this point. Me, te, se. Nous, vous, se is all there is to remember and also differentiate the verbs that um, have the reflexive form to the ones that do not have the reflexive form. Watch out for them because sometimes they change meaning entirely. Now, the second part of this video, it will be again a short video. The point is not to go in length as to the theory of this point. The point is to have you do as many exercises as possible. Second part, four categories of pronominal verbs here. The first one being when the subject receives the action passively. It's called le verbe pronominal passif. For example, the sea can be seen from the balcony. La mer se voit depuis le balcon. Okay? But not to mistake with the passive form and, you know, the headache starts here when you're wondering if the sentence is 
a reflexive uh, verb, there is a reflexive verb in the sentence, a pronominal verb, what kind of pronominal verb, or a passive form. So you need to be very careful and attentive to that. Because when I write la mer est vue, the sea is seen, we have a different meaning. Not to mistake les verbes pronominaux passifs with the passive voice. And of course, we have a video about the passive voice on this channel. Second part of this B point, le verbe pronominal réfléchi. It's when the subject receives the action. She's printing herself in front of the mirror. Elle se pomponne devant le miroir. Are you a girl? Do you like printing yourself in front of the mirror? Se pomponner. It's a well beautiful verb in French. Se pomponner. Well, it is un verbe pronominal réfléchi. She's pretty... Uh, well, it w <laughs> I guess well, not only girls can put on makeup. Um, I don't want to offense anybody by saying that only girls can do that. But what I mean here is in the example we have here, we have a feminine subject. She's printing herself in front of the mirror and she receives the action at ce pompon. Whereas here, the C is not receiving the action of being seen by the balcony. This is a passive uh, form. Um, of <laughs> this is a passive pronominal verb, not a passive form. We have a third one here, le verbe pronominal réciproque. And when the action is acted out by all participants in a scene, we have this kind of exotic sounding pronominal verb. They all looked at each other. And you can picture that in a factory over there. You have all these mechatronic robots looking at each other. Ils se regardèrent tous. Can you identify this tense? By the way, is it the imparfait, negative imparfait? Is it the um, conditional? Is it the future simple? Is it the passé simple? Yes, you know it's the passé simple. I like using the, this tense because it is still common in the written form in French. Ils se regardèrent tous. And because all participants of the scene are acting and acting out this behavior, it is called verb pronominal réciproque. Reciprocal pronominal verb. We have also a fourth kind, which is called the verb pronominal subjectif. And this one is a bit confusing again, because the subject does not receive the action. So when you have this example over here saying, he's making fun of Robotron 18 Pro Max. Il se paye la tête de Robotron 18 Pro Max. As you can see on screen, il is not receiving the action. Il is mocking Robotron 18 Pro Max. And thus it is called un verbe pronominal subjectif. So happening, but not to the person that gives and, and is the subject of the sentence. And if we go back to the beginning of this document, that will come in contrast with the definition of what a pronominal verb is. Pronominal verbs are used when a subject is doing the action for himself. And the reflexive pronouns, mutose, nouvuse, are placed before the verb. So we need to keep that into account when analyzing sentences in French. And le verbe pronominal subjectif, well, it is what it is, but the subject does not receive the action. And you might ask now, why do I need to know this? Because at some point, you're going to want to analyze French sentences. This is not necessarily at a high level of French that you're going to want to do that. You're going to want to do that at some point, be it at the beginning, intermediate or advanced level, to make sure that you can conjugate properly. You make sure that you can agree names with other words properly. And we'll have, of course, we have lessons about that on this channel. but. This is why you need to, to study that. I'm just, I'm not just giving knowledge so that you know more things that you will never use. This has actually a purpose and especially useful when you reach the advanced level of French where you cannot cheat anymore. You need to know what you're doing. It's not enough just to pretend like you're knowing what you're doing. You really need to know what's happening below the surface. You're becoming de this detective reading the body language of people, you know, to, to find out if their actions match their words. This is what you're doing with French grammar at some point. 
It's very, very, very hard to lie when you're using French Brema. And at some point you're going to run into a problem. And for that, it is very useful to know these kind of things. Let's summarize this lesson, shall we? We define what a pronominal verb is. They are used when a subject is doing the action for himself. We also learned about the reflexive pronouns over here. We learned that you have verbs that change meaning in the pronominal form and also some verbs that are only working in the pronominal form cannot be used without the pronoun, the reflexive pronoun in front of it. And finally, we uncovered the truth of the four categories of pronominal verbs. Make me sound like <laughs> a seller of some kind when I say these things. But we uncovered the four categories of pronominal verbs. That is a fact. The passive ones, they receive the action passively. They're not involved in act acting out the action. Le verbe promis réfléchi is when the subject receives the action, printing herself in front of the mirror. Le verbe pronomine réciproque is when the action is acted out by all participants of the scene described in the sentence. And le verbe pronominal subject, subjectif is when the subject does not receive the action. Now is the right time to structure this lesson with an exercise. And you know how much I am uh, interested in you completing this exercise so that you can come up with good results as far as grammar goes. Because it's not only one thing to study the French language through theory, you also need to make sure you understand it in practice. Thank you for watching this video. I'll leave you now with a link below this video to find out if you did understand the theory of this lesson. And I wish you a great day. Bonne journée. À la prochaine.